friends welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new and you're stopping by for the first time welcome my name's Melissa and I'm so happy you're here I would like to thank Setver for sponsoring today's video just keep in mind that this is not my normal content I normally do Dollar Tree hauls Dollar Tree DIYs thrift flips things of that nature so if you're looking for the type of content that I'm about to give you that's not what I normally do. If you guys want to see me renovate this house, update it, I would love to bring that to you. Let me know down in the comments. So as you can probably tell by the title, this is my new house tour. Now before we jump in, I, I really don't know where I want to start. I'm super nervous, but I'm also very excited and very proud of myself and my husband of how far we've come not only together but as individuals as well if I'm making this video that means that I did it and we bought this house which is I'm gonna cry which I don't want to do <laughs> because I don't want my makeup to run but I want to tell you guys my story so I was not sure how I wanted to do this and I didn't know how I was going to go about it, but I knew that starting off this year, I wanted you guys to know the real me, not just hands on a screen. So at first, I was just going to sit and tell my story, and then we had no idea we were going to buy this house. We got it, like we put in the offer. It popped up out of nowhere. It was December 19th. Um, we had stopped looking in October because it was just such a stressful thing and people were fighting over houses and overpaying for houses and you know my realtor knew what we wanted blah 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 and I just kind of gave it to God I said I'm not gonna overpay and I'm not gonna fight for a house so when the time is right the right house for us will come to us and now I would like to take a little break to hear a word from our sponsor. Again, I would like to thank Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. And if you guys have never heard of Scentbird, they have become my new obsession. And what they are is a monthly subscription where you can choose from over 600 fragrances, anywhere from designer like Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, Prada, to indie brands like The Harmonist and Confessions of a Rebel. The fragrances are unisex as well as working with the brands. That way you know what you're getting is 100% authentic and you also get a 30 day supply within each of the vials. That way you can try each fragrance before you buy it because I don't know about you guys but I don't have extra money to throw around to just spend on fragrances that I might not like so I love this option because I can try them before I buy them this month I tried Scarlet by Deck of Scarlet which is my absolute favorite Dolce by Dolce & Gabbana and Bright Crystal by Versace and again my personal favorite is the Scarlet by Deck of Scarlet I swear everywhere I went 10 people told me I smell amazing so if you guys want a little confidence boost definitely get your scent bird today i also find it really cool that scent birds products is eight times larger than sample sizes that way you get a whole lot more bang for your buck so as I mentioned, Scentbird has scents from indie brands like The Harmonist, and I don't know if you guys know this, but that bottle of perfume is $295. $295. Yes, I said that right. I don't know about you, but don't go out and waste your money. I'm definitely not. Because honestly, you guys, signing up is so easy. All you have to do is go to scentbird.com. Then once you get to the website, you will see Take Your Scent Quiz, which I personally love because I honestly don't even know what kind of perfume that I like. So this was really helpful to me. So I took the quiz. I kind of figured out what I liked and then went from there. Click the link in the description box below. Once again, make sure you use my code CRAFTY55 for 55% off your first month, which only ends up being $7. And again, I would like to thank Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. I don't need to go searching for the right house. And she called me, I was like, you better go look at it quickly. It's not gonna last because we live in the best school district in our area. Our school district is 
like the paid school, public school, if that makes sense. So um, the academics, all that stuff is as good as a paid school, but it's a public school. So everybody wants to be in this district. It's a very high dollar district. And Sophia was already in school here. And that was one of my big things that I did not want to pull her out of a school district. Yes, their school choice, all that, but it's just easier when you live in district. So that was one of my biggest things. And this house came up, it was in our budget. It was like, perfect all it needed was a little bit of updating was it as big as we wanted absolutely not everybody always wants more space it's what we can afford and we got it i knew it was like i knew that if we got it it was meant to be and you guys <laughs> i have been working to try to get a house for a very long time so i just want to put out a trigger warning um, my story is a little bit graphic. I'm not going to go into serious detail, but I do want you guys to know details, if that makes sense. So I just want to put a trigger warning out there that if things like drug abuse, um, you know, things like that, rape, all that kind of stuff triggers you, then you might want to click off of this video. Also, for any of my family or friends that don't really wanna know, then maybe you should probably click off as well because this is my truth and I have to tell my truth. So before I get into my life, I just want to start by where my husband and I started. So my husband and I started, um, he was just getting done taking care of his mom for two years, his mom and her husband. They got put into a nursing home. He had just got a job. He didn't have much saved up because the state didn't want to pay him. His brothers, um, you know, he pretty much take, took care of his mom and stepdad, so he wasn't working at the time. So when he did finally get a job and, you know, his mom went into the home, he obviously didn't have anywhere to live. So his boss helped him get a camper. Well, then we had a mutual friend and I met him. Then you know, long story short, we ended up living in a camper together. And then seven months later, I got pregnant with my daughter. And obviously, it's, <laughs> it's not an ideal situation to live in a camper with a kid, right? So we were like, okay, we have to do something. So we figured it out. We bought this house that I'm in now, which is a 13 by 70 trailer. And you guys, I put my everything into this house like <laughs> they're not, they're happy tears but <laughs> but it was the first time in my life that I had normalcy And something that was mine I really would love to write a book someday gosh I said I wasn't gonna do this <laughs> um, I would really love to write a book someday just because um, there's just so much I could say and I really don't want this video to be too long I really just want to be like pretty much not straight to the point but straight to the point um I I've been through more in my life than most people could ever dream of and I think we all we actually I know for a fact we all go through serious struggles I don't care if you're rich poor happy healthy sick it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter. We all go through traumas. We all go through things on, in our childhood or, you know, teenage or early adulthood, whatever the case may be. We all have traumas. We all have triggers. We all have these things. So I don't know why still in 2022 that, you know, these things are so like crazy, you know, but anyway, I, I know this is kind of all over the place, you guys. I try to like write down, but it just, it never comes out the way you want it to anyway. So, and I also have ADHD, but I'm just gonna do the best I can. <laughs> so 
I'm going to start from the beginning and I'm just going to give you guys a rough idea of my life, like timeline if you will. So my parents split up when I was five years old. Um, it was a really ugly divorce. Um, you know, they were not on speaking terms. It was very hostile. Um, you know, we didn't know which way. You know, it's really hard as a kid because you love both your parents and you want both of them to be proud and love you and whatever. But then when they split up, right, it's like, okay, well, if I am nice to one, then the other one will be upset. And if, if I'm nice to the other, then the other one thinks I'm like favorite. It's, it's this weird tug of war. And as a child, you don't want to listen to rules. So I don't remember exactly what age it was, but I know that we went to live with our mom because my mom was way more lenient and we got away with a lot more. So my brother has always had issues growing up bipolar, ADHD. He was on medication from a very young age and he was addicted to drugs. He started getting into drugs at a young age and for the for a long time I was against it I hated what he did I hated like everything he stood for again at a very young age I've always been an old soul like my mom's friends would always tell me I'm an old soul and I can rem remember sitting with them and just like listening to them talk and just being fascinated by adult conversation and ever since I was little I just like understood, I don't even know how to explain it, but I understood life in such a different way, I think, than like my friends and the other kids. I don't know, maybe I'm just crazy, but I, I was always my brother's older sister rather than the younger sister. Um, I mean, still to this day, I'm like, I want to be the younger sister. I'm tired of being the older sister. I want to play the role that I was given. But, I mean, at this point, it probably will never, never change. But, anyway, my brother lived with my mom first because he was a little more uncontrollable. And then I followed soon after, if memory serves me correctly. And, again, my mom was very lenient, so my brother got away with more. He, you know, had drugs and all kinds of stuff. So. I started using at the early age of 12 years old. I also lived in the city of Wilmington, Delaware, where it once was murder capital of USA because of how small it is, but how high the crime rate and the kill rate is. Um, that's why at one point that's what it was so I mean I was in the streets I was here there and everywhere I was with this one with that one um, and just did a lot of not very good things as a young kid and then fast forward to my high school years I skipped I didn't show up I just wanted to sit around and smoke pot all day I didn't care about anything um, I was pretty depressed. I didn't really know who I was or where my life was going at that age. You're trying to figure out all those things. And when you're in a situation like I was in, you just don't care, I guess. So, like I said, throughout my entire early child, like not early, early childhood, early teenage years, um, a lot of it I really don't remember and that's not good like I remember bits and pieces and I know like that's the way that it goes but it's just really like crazy to me how your brain can kind of protect you from trauma but at the same time sometimes it doesn't um, so when I was 15 years old I was abducted and sexually assaulted by two men I didn't know and that really like catapulted me into the really not caring about anything. You know, as a young teen and doing the things that I did, I knew that I didn't want to be like that forever. So I was kind of hoping like, oh, maybe I'll just grow out of it or I don't know, maybe one day I'll wake up and like, I'll be fine. You know, like I won't 
want this life anymore you know what I mean but that day never came um, until later and after that happened I really just was lost totally totally lost and I try to go to counseling and things like that but as a kid I don't I don't think that I was ready to accept the things that had happened to me. I don't think I was ready to accept the things I had done wrong. And I was just like, whatever, like, I might as well just really go hard now because it doesn't matter. Like, I've already screwed my life up so bad that at the time I thought there was no coming back from this. And I guess that's why I wanted to do this video because I've been eight years clean of everything and I know that so many people struggle to this day. I talk to several people who struggle on a daily basis and I just want you to know that you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. I literally was homeless in and out of jail, um, things I never would ever do in a normal brain. I did when I was getting high. And my drug of choice was heroin. I was a very bad heroin addict. Very bad. And Xanax as well. I've overdosed seven times. Like, it is an absolute miracle that I'm sitting here today and I'm coherent and clear-minded enough to tell you guys my story and to be a mom and to be a wife and to be a good person because there was a point in my life where I didn't know if I would make it another day and then I had a very, very, very abusive boyfriend who would get drunk, call me names, hit me. One time he poured a five gallon bucket of white paint. I tried to run away from him down the steps and he poured a five gallon white paint bucket over my head. such trauma and to be freed not freed like I have demons in a battle every day but honestly you guys I swear I swear on everything I love I thank God every day and that's why you guys always hear me saying how grateful and how truly thankful I am because every second of life that I have, I'm so grateful for. And these are happy tears, I'm not sad. So just know that, like, I've been through a lot and I should be a statistic and I should be just a number or just a distant story but I'm not for some reason God spared my life so many times so many times like I don't deserve it and then when I was 22 I lost my mom my mom got diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer and although she was in remission um, when she passed away her um, artery in her heart was 99% clogged why I don't know like she had a port over her heart for the chemo so why they didn't check her heart I'm just kind of confused but that was 22 and then, like, I thought I went hard after my assault, but after my mom passed away, that was really, 
that was really, really bad because my mom was my best friend. Through my addiction, through all the things I've ever been through, my mom never left my side. <laughs> that's why I wanted daughters so bad just so that I could have that just so that I could have that mother-daughter dynamic again because everybody always asks me like why do you want girls why do you want girls and like I don't know but I believe it's because I want that I want that mother-daughter dynamic back that I know will never get back, but it does kind of feel like some kind of a void. And it's just really sad, like, my dad gets to see me do good and take care of my kids and do, like, and work and be a good mom and be a good wife and, like, take care of my house and... Like, my dad gets to see the new me. And I know, like, my mom can see it or whatever, but we're human, right? We're selfish, so... We want to, um, be selfish and have them in the flesh. I know I probably look a hot mess. I can't see myself because I don't have my glasses on. But... I don't really care, honestly. Um... I forget what I was saying. I lost my mom at 22. And then her husband. So her husband didn't want to marry her until like all of a sudden five months before she passed away. He wanted to marry her. So he did. And she trusted him with her estate. And she was really worried about my brother and I like taking the money and just blowing it. So she trusted my stepdad to disperse of the money once we got our lives together which i can absolutely respect that 100 percent now that i'm a mom i respect that so much and he promised my mom that he would do right by her like he knew my mom's kids were everything he couldn't stand it he could not stand that my mom loved her kids more than him. And my grandmother really did not care for him. We just all felt his energy and could just tell, like, not a good person. Anyway, he fooled my mom for sure. Um, he was supposed to give my brother and I, like, a huge chunk of money. I don't know the exact amount. But I know that at the end of everything, her estate ended up being like $600,000. So when I got clean and got whatever, like that money was for me to get on my feet and start my life fresh, right? This man ran with our money. He gave my brother and I like, I don't know, maybe a couple thousand dollars. Like every month he'd give us like I don't know, a couple hundred bucks or something, but we did not see our money. And I think everything happens for a reason. And I'm not that I'm glad I didn't get the money, but I, I'm a firm believer that if I didn't get that money, there was a, a reason. Maybe I would have gotten it and just went right back to my old ways after, you know, I don't, I don't know, but the point is that I did not need that money to succeed. So when I got with my husband, we just were such a good team from the beginning. Um, after I moved in with him, my abusive ex ended up passing away. He got hit by a car and passing away. That was a very crazy, weird thing as well. It's like all these things happened and it's just, I don't know, like, I feel like it was God or my mom or my guardian angel or whoever. I don't know, like, I don't know why these things happen, but the point is things happen for a reason and there was a reason that all these things happened. So 
why it is, I don't know. But my husband and I, it was just the perfect match. And we were never supposed to meet. Like, how we met, we never were supposed to meet. That was pure fate. He lives downstate, and I moved down here with him an hour and a half away from where I grew up all my life. So, it was pure fate that we met. And since him and I got together, the life we have built is just such a blessing, you guys. I, I promise. I wake up thanking God. I go to bed thanking God. I know how lucky I am. I tell my husband every single day, I'm so lucky to have you. I'm so appreciative of you. You've taught me so much about life. Like, watching him be the person he is made me realize the person I want and need to be as well and I'm just so grateful like I'm grateful for all my struggles I am proud of where I've been where I am currently and where I'm going because at this point my motto is failure is not an option for me failure is not an option and I started my YouTube channel to have a community because I know that tomorrow is not promised and my husband is 24 years older than me and at, at, for a long time I was a stay-at-home mom with my daughter I got very sick in her pregnancy I stopped working and then my husband never really wanted me to work anyway like he makes pretty good money not like great money but it was enough for us to live off of um, but I'm very aware that tomorrow isn't promised and I don't want to rely on somebody else so I need to rely on me myself and I and my husband if that makes sense because if I were to go tomorrow he has a job he'd be able to take care of our kids if he were to go tomorrow at the time, I didn't have a job, I was a stay-at-home mom, what would I have done, right? So I kind of started my YouTube channel with the thought of just kind of having a community um, because I was only a stay-at-home mom, I helped him with his business, I took care of the kids, but I didn't really have, I mean I was going to college at the time, but I didn't really have anything that I felt fulfilled, like as far as work you know what I mean so that's when I started my channel and I honestly didn't think it would ever amount to anything obviously I have hopes I have dreams I'm like if they can do it I can do it and I started my channel from my kitchen I haven't had much help with my channel at all I'm not a techie person I never really learned the whole electronics thing um, before moving in with my husband so that was all foreign and new to me so everything I had to teach myself and learn by myself and then I've done a few collabs here and there but really like I'm so proud that at the end of the day I can lay my head down at night knowing that majority of you guys I got myself and I didn't need anybody else to get me there. And I understand people love collabs. And if you want to do that, that's totally up to you. It's your channel. More power to you. But for me and my channel, I'm really proud of my success on my own, if that makes sense. So I would like to just keep it that way. Um, I'm also not the type of person to smile in your face and pretend I like you. Um, if I really don't so it's hard for me to like be chummy with people that I don't know if that makes sense so that's another reason why I don't do many collabs um, but I just want you guys to know that I'm human behind the camera and I go through a lot of things I've been through a lot of things but I live the most amazing fruitful happy life my husband and I never fight like we're just such a well-oiled machine at this point we've been together eight years that I I literally get on my knees and pray to God and thank him every day for delivering me of my addiction because when I got clean 
I did not struggle like most people do. I never relapsed. I never went backwards. I never went back to my old life like most people do. And I just thank God, like, thank you. I, I don't know how I would have done it without, like, God. And, and I'm, this is crazy because I'm not a very religious person. Like, I grew up in the Catholic Church. I grew up going to church, but I'm, I'm not very religious. But I do believe in God and a higher power. And I do believe that everything happens for a reason and there are no coincidences. That's just my personal opinion. So as you can imagine, this new house is such a blessing. Everything I have is such a blessing. Right now we have two houses that even though it's very very stressful and like how much of a blessing is that we can stay here and renovate the other house while we're here we don't have to move right away i'm just really lucky to have everything that i have i'm really lucky to have you guys i'm lucky to have my kids my stepson who i don't look at as a stepson that's my son um, I'm just so blessed to have my dad and my stepmom and my grandmother and my uncle and my brother and I, just everybody that I have, everything that I have from a little tiny thing like a Q-tip to a cell phone, a high dollar camera, a computer, a car, things like that. Houses. I mean, still to this day, when I go to Walmart or I go and like I do normal things. I don't know if anything is normal, but like go to the grocery store, do mom things. It's still very, like I'm still reminded of how lucky I am of back in the day when I didn't have any of those things. And I wasn't sure like where my next meal was coming from or where I was going to sleep that night. If I would even have somewhere to sleep. I mean, I can't tell you how many nights I've slept under a park bench or um, slept at a school under a playground with just a jacket, a couch cushion, a blanket, and your boyfriend in the dead of winter. So that's where I've been. So when you look at my life and you see all these things that I have, I busted my ass for every single one of them and excuse my language because I really don't like to cuss on my channel I don't do that I I don't think it's respectful I think it's very disrespectful but I have busted my butt to get where I am I've busted my butt to get every little thing I have Maybe I didn't work in the beginning when I had my daughters, but guess what? I contributed to the household. I did the dishes by hand every single night. I did the laundry every single day. All the things, I always had a clean house. Not because my husband wanted me to, but because I took pride in cleaning and keeping my space nice. So, I don't know you guys. I know this was all over the place, and I don't even know if I'm going to put this up. Because I'm really super nervous, but I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. I just didn't know how to do it, but I just want you guys to know that I love you no matter what, and if I can do it, you can do it too, and if any of you are struggling, need help for addiction, I'm going to leave all that info down in the description box. You can also reach out to me if you're having a bad day. I love chatting with you guys. And just know that you're not alone. I am eight years sober. I'm in recovery and I'll always be an addict. I'll always be a heroin addict. No matter what. Doesn't matter how long clean I am. I could any day fall back into that. Will I? Absolutely not. I mean... It's been eight years. I could never imagine. See, the thing was, once I got a taste of the good life, that was it for me. I was like, I'm not going back to sleep under a park bench. I'm not going to be in dirty clothes. Like, this is the life. So, 
I also, I am also very aware that many people relapse and many people struggle. My brother included. He's one of them. But I thank God that I just never did. And I don't, I don't know why or how, but I'm grateful. So anyway, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it was a little, like, emotional and graphic and detailed but I just wanted you guys to get a clear understanding of who I am like I said and just know that the person that you hear is the person you're always going to get because I don't play those games where I act one way on camera and different behind the scenes because there are many many creators especially in the crafting community who pull wool right over many people's eyes and that's okay because eventually what's done in the dark always comes to the light so eventually you can only hide who you are for so long like if you're a bad person that comes out because bad people do things and don't even realize they're doing bad things because they think there's literally nothing wrong with their behavior. So just pay attention to some people who you watch. Spend your social media currency very wisely because you only have so much time and who you spend your time with, who you help put money in their pockets, it does matter. I mean, at least to me it does. So just pay attention. Um, things aren't always what they seem. And I just wish people would be more transparent and honest and like show who they really are instead of being one way behind the scenes and then act a totally different way on camera to their audience. Like that just really fires me up because I'm an empath and please don't pee on me and tell me it's rain. Like, just give it to me straight. I don't need this whole, like, you know what I mean? I just want to know the real truth. So don't try to, like, fool me and then really in the end, you're just some other person. And behind the scenes, you treat other people like crap. You're condescending. You're rude. You think you're better than everybody else. Like, I just can't with people like that. So just be careful who you spend your social media currency with is all I'm saying. So anyway you guys without further ado I hope you guys enjoy my empty house tour and I love you guys so much. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Okay you guys editing me here don't mind my open closet. I'm not gonna bother getting up to close it but I've had time to edit the video and just look back on it and I didn't get a chance to just say that if you're struggling and you feel like you can't do it, just know that you're not alone. You can do this and it doesn't matter what you've done, you can have a zillion chances if you want them. All you have to do is just ask for help, admit that you have an issue and take the steps to better your life. and truly take the steps if you're ready. So I just wanted to insert that in here real quick. Again, I appreciate every single one of you more than you'll ever know. Um, without you, I wouldn't have this platform. And without you, I wouldn't have anywhere to share my story and possibly just help even one person because that's why I wanted to do this. I wanted to do this to show people that it doesn't matter how bad in life you've royally screwed up, you can still come back from it no matter what. So anyway, you guys, I love you. Let's jump into the new house tour. I'm so excited and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. So I was able to just go right to the listing and take the pictures from the listing. That way you guys could see the kitchen beforehand and then kind of see what we did. And obviously the realtors or whoever takes pictures always make them look so much better than, you know, reality. But 
all in all this house really did look like the pictures so i was so excited obviously i'm not going to show the front of my house for privacy reasons but when you walk in the front door this is what you see so to the right you see the first living room and you look out into the neighborhood these lots are huge my lot is 0.83 acres so we have a huge yard for the kids to run there is just so much more space they love it here already they literally just run around and laugh and play i was actually super worried about buying a house and moving because like i was telling my husband and by the way off to the first living room is the master. So we're in the master bedroom right now. Um, so I guess I did just want to mention that. But but I was telling my husband, the energy and the vibes are really good in our house. So I was super afraid to like move and then the vibes and the energy. I don't know. It's weird. But this moment that I walked in here, I immediately felt home. And I immediately just kind of knew that this would be ours I don't know how and it's funny because the realtor sent the listing and I had just been through so many houses at this point like I looked and I was like I don't know you know I don't really like it I was probably probably being a Debbie Downer and my sweet husband I love him to death he was like I understand babe it's no big deal let's just go look at it it's we'll go look at it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. That's all. And I'm like, yeah, for sure. I definitely want to go look at it. So we went and looked at it. And like I said, immediately upon walking in, I was just, I was like, wow, this is actually really nice. I actually really like this. I don't know why or how I got that feeling, but I just did. So now we're in the master bathroom currently in the house we're in now we have one vanity one like one, a small vanity one sink everything is super cramped so to have a master bathroom like this is seriously such a blessing eventually we're going to take the tub and the cabinets out of that back wall take that window out and the um tub or the shower out and then make that whole back wall a huge shower and then put cabinets right here where that shower is um, thank god my husband is a handyman and he can do all that because we save so much money by doing that so i'm just kind of getting a picture or a video of everything before paint now a few days after this the painters came in um, thankfully the previous owners kind of got a quote prepaid for paint that way when the that way when somebody bought it then the paint was already paid for and the painters would just come in and do that so I was so appreciative of that because not many people do that but I do think the previous owner obviously like knew how bad it needed a paint job so I think that was just kind of like a selling point, if you will. Um, but I was sure glad that they did. I've also never had my own walk-in closet. So that's definitely a new thing for me as well. Um, I've lived in this house for so long. I'm thinking of ways I could use this other than a closet. <laughs> but it is going to be really nice to have a walk-in closet. So as you walk out to the master, you are immediately met by the first living room, the kitchen, and the second living room. You can kind of see all of them. It's open floor paint open floor plan I really love that but I also just loved the openness of the kitchen also the amazing cabinets I mean it might not look like a lot of cabinets to many people but for me I've literally I've literally dealt with I don't know probably 10 cabinets for the past seven years and like we may do you know it was no big deal but now that I'm seeing how many cabinets are in this house I'm super excited not to have everything so cramped together I feel like I can't ever see anything that way I don't know what I have I don't know where anything is I don't know <laughs> anyway I'm super excited to have a little bit more counter and cabinet space and then obviously there is kind of like a corner 
island, catty corner island. I'm not really too sure what you would like to call it, but um, we really didn't like the two levels of it. Mark and I are both really short. <laughs> He's only like 5'4", and I'm not even five foot so that was just a little bit too high for me so you guys are going to see at the end i do show you a sneak peek of the kitchen that way you guys can let me know if you would like to see you know the renovation process what we're doing to the house blah 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 it's not going to be all of my content don't worry um, but I am going to try to implement some of those things into my channel. So if that interests you, let me know. So as you walk out of the kitchen, there's just like a little space for my kitchen table, which it's the perfect space. I don't, you don't really need much space. We don't need a dining room or anything like that because it's only ever just us, even on holidays. So a dining room would not be necessary anyway. And then as you walk out of kind of like the dinette I guess you want to call it I don't know is that is that the proper term I don't know is the second living room and then walking out of the second living room into the laundry room and then there's the back door there obviously now we notice that there's a little bit of damage at the bottom of that cover um, behind there is the hot water heater we opened that up and I really honestly can't remember what my husband found um, but I do know that whatever we find that becomes an issue, we will fix right away. Thankfully, my husband is a handyman. My dad is the same way. Both of them are carpenters. And that's an amazing thing to have when you own a home. So walking out of the living room and the laundry room, now you're going to find the kids' room. Now, we were looking for a four-bedroom house so everybody could have their own room, but I figured that the girls are going to end up in each other's room anyway, and honestly, when I was growing up, I wish that I had a sister to share a room with. They might fight like cats and dogs, but when they do play together, they do play together so nicely. They love each other. So I have a feeling that they would be sneaking in each other's room anyway. So the girls are going to share this room. I already had it painted. The painters are actually there as we speak. They should be finishing up today, which I'm so, so excited about. Let me know in the comments. Do you guys like that um, cabinet color that I chose? I literally had no idea that there was even a thing as like color of the year, but that's the color of the year I honestly had no idea until I posted it on Instagram if you're not following me on, following me on Instagram and TikTok by the way it's all things crafty too, all one word um, but anyway I share updates personal things like I'm on there every single day behind the scenes like all kinds of things so if you guys want to see my life or things on an everyday basis definitely come over to Instagram and check me out but as we walked out of the girls room then it's the kids bathroom that Zachary my son who's 16 and the girls will share he's only with us like um, on the weekends some weeks definitely all summer long usually or at least like a good bit of the summer just since he's not with us during the week but that was Zachary's room to the left-hand side of the bathroom. And then I'm not going to show you much of this, you guys, but I did just want to give you a sneak peek. I painted the bathroom cabinets gray. My husband did the kitchen cabinets. Um, we did the butcher block. We cut down the island. We've done so much already. So let me know if you guys want to see that. Like I said, if you made it this far in the video, please, please, please leave me a big heart in the comments or just leave big heart because I know that you guys are my day ones and I just appreciate you so much. So thank you for letting me tell my story. Thank you for giving me the space to feel comfortable enough to tell my story. And thank you for being here no matter what it is that I do on any day that I do it. So with all that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing day. If nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning and worthy. You are gorgeous and I love you with all my heart and soul and I'll catch you guys in the next one. The next one will definitely be a DIY video. Bye.
check out my DIY videos popping up here to your left or join my DIY fam to your right.